Hey everyone, my name is Courtney and welcome back to my channel. We're in my car today. I am starting a weekend vlog because today is Indie Bookstore Day. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I don't see a lot of indie bookstores featured in booktube videos. A lot of times like bookshop with me videos and things like that tend to take place at like Barnes and Noble and stuff. But Chicago has such a rich independent bookstore scene. There are so, so many that I love here. And I had big plans today. I was going to go to 10. They have a thing going where if you go to 10 stores, you get 10% off at all the participating stores. And then it started raining today. And just the idea of getting Wolf in and out of the car in the rain and walking a few blocks between certain shops just didn't sound that fun to me anymore. So that's why I'm wearing the baby carrier right now, just to make my life a little quicker and easier when we go to each place. Our first stop is going to be Pilsen Community Books on 18th Street in Pilsen. It is one of my all-time favorite bookstores. It's so gorgeous. You've also probably seen my always carry a book sweatshirt on here. That is from Pilsen Community Books. And I think that bookstore really just encapsulates what is so great about independent bookstores. They are such a wonderful addition to the community. They care about workers' rights, racial equality, very much into a lot of social justice issues as well. And I love that indie bookstores can take the, that sort of stand that like bigger stores aren't able to. So we're gonna start at Pilsen Community Books. I would like to get some mochi donuts. This new mochi donut place just opened kind of close to Pilsen Community Books. So I'd love to go there. And my husband gets out of work in about three hours. So hopefully we can make it to Pilsen, make it to Mochi Nut. And then I would really like to go to Semicolon Bookstore. They are a black owned bookstore here that I shamefully have not been to yet. And they actually just moved to a new location kind of close to me in Wicker Park. So hopefully to going there, we're going to pick up my husband from work and we're going to go to Bucket of Blood again because I really want to get No One Gets Out Alive by Adam Neville. So I am hoping that they have that there and I'm going to be looking for some like short horror, like novella type of books for Thrill to the Weekend at the end of May. So I'm not going to 10 bookstores today, but I am going to go to hopefully at least a few and tomorrow we're planning on going for a nice long walk so i just figured i'd vlog till the end of the weekend i might even finish the book that i'm reading right now which i will talk more about later my company is starting a step challenge for the month of may which is starts tomorrow and i'm a team captain so i feel like i really have to show up i've started wearing my apple watch again and you know, I think we're going to be listening to a lot of audiobooks this month as we try to get ready for the step challenge. I will see you guys at Pilsen Community Books. I feel so awkward about vlogging in public, so hopefully I can at least get some footage of each place that we go. And then at the end of today, maybe even tomorrow, I will do a little haul for you guys.
Hey everyone, happy Sunday. We have been taking it easy so far today. My husband and son went to music class, which happens every Sunday. So I wanted to tell you how Indie Bookstore Day went and show you everything that I got yesterday. So the first place we went to was Pilsen Community Books. I haven't been there in such a long time and it was even better than I remembered. It is on 18th Street, which has lots of really cool restaurants and vintage stores and bars. And I actually lived in Pilsen when I first moved to Chicago. So I just love that neighborhood so much. And it is really like a book lover's dream in there. We've got the floor to ceiling shelves. There are rolling ladders so you can get books that are higher up. Really great fiction selection and then tons of really amazing nonfiction books as well. I showed in my b-roll clips a little bit of some of the different categories that they had. So there's lots of like philosophy but then also books about like anarchy and organizing and protests and things like that so lots of really cool books in there i just kept pulling them off the shelf i like could not stop all of the books that they had like facing out were so tempting once i picked up i think like my fourth or fifth book i really had to like Put a pin in it because I knew that we were going to be going to at least a couple other bookstores. But if you ever visit Chicago, definitely worth going to Pilsen and definitely going to Pilsen Community Books. I didn't go there yesterday, but in Pilsen there's also the Open Books Warehouse, which is another like book lovers paradise. It is a massive warehouse full of books and it's just such a stunning place and I think all the books are like three or four dollars for like hardcovers. They have a lot of arcs and kids books. Another really great bookish stop in Pilsen. After Pilsen Community Books we did make it to Mochi Nuts which is the new mochi donut place on Taylor Street here. Super cute space. They are definitely working out some kinks, I think, with it being so new, but it was worth it because they were so good. I just like love the chewy texture of mochi and in donut form, it was just like absolute perfection. But I could tell in Mochi Nut that Wolf was really reaching his limit. He was very fussy. He's getting tired. On the way to Semicolon Bookstore, he fell asleep in the car and as I was circling the block looking for parking, semicolon, it's in Wicker Park on Division Street in an area that is notorious for being terrible at parking. <laughs> so as I was circling around, I could not find a spot and it was kind of sprinkling so I didn't want to park too far away. So. As he fell asleep, I just decided to come back another day. We went to Starbucks, picked up Peter, my husband, from work, and then we went to Bucket of Blood in Avondale. Bucket of Blood, I mentioned it in one of my last eating vlogs, just that their horror selection is incredible. They have lots of independently published horror books, extreme horror books, sci-fi, fantasy, comics, there's records there, and their horror selection, it's just so good. Lots of things that you have heard of, lots of things that you haven't, and got a couple of books there, and also one for Wolfie. And then we capped off the night at Demon, which is just down the block from there. They were having like a German Halloween party with tarot reading. So we were just having some drinks and we always get a soft pretzel when we go there, partially for us and partially because Wolf also really loves them. And now today's Sunday, it's only 10 in the morning. We've been up for a few hours. As soon as they get back from music class, we're gonna take a walk. I wanna make a strong showing on the first day of my company step challenge. And so we're gonna go get some pastries and I really wanted to go to semicolon today, but then I forgot that they're closed on Sundays. We're just gonna see where the day takes us. First, let's see what I got yesterday. First, I got this tote. It matches the sweatshirt that I have from Pilsen Community Books. So it has, you know, Pilsen Community Books, 
with the cool design, the always carry a book. This is designed by a local artist here too. So love that. Also with these totes, they are giving 10% off at Pilsen Community Books. So that's also amazing. The first book that I got was The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. And it is a lot about trauma and how it informs us, affects us, and how our mental health affects our bodies and things like that. I have been especially interested in reading this since I went through childhood cancer and it was obviously a major impactful thing that happened in my life and something that I still struggle with even though it's been 15 years. It was a thyroid cancer so it's something that a lot of people will brush off and say like, oh, that's the easy cancer, that's the good one to have. And it's just very dismissive of what the actual experience is like, especially as a 15 year old, it changed my appearance. I've got these neck scars and I still have to go in for blood work constantly and scan. So it is by no means an easy way out. And when I first started talking to a therapist at the beginning of the pandemic, it was the first time that somebody acknowledged that what I went through was traumatic and it was very validating for me to hear someone say that instead of, oh, well, you survived, so you're good now. So I have been really curious to read this for a long time. It's got super small font and like, there's quite a lot of pages in here. So I think it might be something that I read as I'm reading other things, but looking forward to that. I also got The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. I cannot remember who just read this. I saw a booktube video recently where someone was reading this. I cannot remember who, but this is a short story collection with three stories in it about women going through different things in their marriage, their connection and their identity to themselves sounds right up my alley and I love this cover and I just love that sort of 60s womanhood sort of vibes in a book so I'm looking forward to reading these stories as well. Pilsen Community Books is full of like such big brain energy. There's so many incredible books about so many interesting and incredible topics. And when I think about big brain books, I think about when I first started going to uh, art school here and I joined the fiction program just knowing that I love to write. And all of my reading at that point had been like Sarah Dessen and Wally Lamb. Like I read some contemporary literature, but not a ton. And I was going to school with other 18 year olds who had been reading classic literature for years. And they had all of these really unique and eclectic tastes. And so I felt so far behind. And now I know that's bullshit, you know, reading classics and reading those like big brain energy books doesn't make you more of a reader or a better reader than anyone else. But one of the books that always stood out to me in college from one of those like smart reader kids was Ficciones by Jorge Luis Borges. This is also a short story collection that came out in the 60s. And it was a book at the time where I was like, how does an 18 year old know to read this? I had never heard of it. And it's something that I, I keep getting drawn to in bookstores, so I finally picked this up. It is translated. I think there's a collection of stories spanning from the 40s to the 60s. I know that he really appreciated books, librarians, booksellers, and that does come up in his works as well. I'm not sure when I'll read this, but it will be soon. The next book that I picked up is another one that I've been wanting to read for a long time and that is All About Love by Bell Hooks. I am especially curious to read this from the parenting angle. I know she talks a lot about how we show love and express love and receive love and how that affects parenting. I have seen so many passages from this book on Instagram and just online and a lot of them have really stuck out to me. I think this is one that I will read sooner rather than later because I have been in the mood for more nonfiction reading. And the last book that I picked up at Pilsen Community Books was Breasts and Eggs by Miko Kawakami. I have seen a few people read this. Of course, the title is very 
evocative, you know, it really grabs your attention there. And I know that this is about three women in Tokyo and two of them are sisters and one of them is the daughter of one of the sisters. And we have one sister who is childless and sort of struggling with that state of her life as she gets older. Her sister is really looking for a doctor to get breast implants and then the daughter is mute. To my understanding, it's dealing with beauty standards, how that affects us as we are young and as we get older. So I am really looking forward to reading this hopefully soon as well. At Bucket of Blood, we got a couple and I actually got one book that I was really hoping to get and that was No One Gets Out Alive by Adam Neville. I have only read The Reddening by Adam Neville and it is like the scariest fucking book I've ever read in my life. I was actually terrified while reading it. My husband is a big Adam Neville fan as well. He really likes Adam Neville's short stories. He's the one that recommended The Reddening to me and now it is my go-to horror recommendation. So No One Gets Out Alive is about a woman who rents an apartment. The only other tenants are also women and the landlord is a little overly friendly, very chatty, probably sus is my guess. And then weird things start happening. So this is a haunted house book from my understanding. I don't know that much else about it. I have seen other booktubers who couldn't get through it and I'm not exactly sure why or I don't remember why. I'm looking forward to seeing if this scares me even half as much as The Reddening did. The other book that we picked up at Bucket of Blood was Antioch by Jessica Leonard. I have never heard of this, but it was in the female horror author section at Bucket of Blood. And the cover is just so pretty, which got my attention first, but it sounds so fascinating. It's about this sleepy little town, not much goes on there. And then six women have been found like brutally murdered and our main character is Bess. She is a bookseller and she has a shortwave radio that picks up something a little bit creepy and now she thinks that the seventh victim has been abducted. Trying to figure out what's going on, piecing together the clues of what's happening, and also trying to avoid being a victim herself. This sounds super, super creepy. And the back of it describes it as being a cross between Session 9, which we love, and Disappearance at Devil's Rock. And it says it's an eerie, mind-bending debut horror novel guaranteed to leave you drowning in paranoia. Yes, please. And the real last book that we picked up at Bucket of Blood was Goodnight Goon. This is by Michael Rex and it is a little monster twist on the classic Goodnight Moon. This is just so cute, especially if you are a horror fan and know a kid or have a kid. It has very like horror themed illustrations. There is the goon who is being ordered to go back to bed under the bed, of course. And there's werewolves, there's Martians, there's mummies and skeletons, and it's just so cute. We do have Good Night Moon and love to read that to Wolf, but I think this will be a fun little change up. I am going to go sneak in a little bit more reading time before my husband and Wolf come back. I am currently reading The First Day of Spring by Nancy Tucker. I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. I heard about this from Brandon Baker on TikTok. I think his handle is just Baker Reads. And he recommends it a ton for really disturbing books. And it is absolutely disturbing. We have two timelines going. The first is a little girl. She is eight and she has just killed a little boy. It happens in the first sentence. That timeline really shows us why she did what she did, how her childhood is. It really is another nature versus nurture thing where 
the conditions that she's growing up in doesn't lead you to think that she's going to have a great life and just like the things that she does are very like serial killer red flags and of course now they're investigating this murder they're trying to find out who did it and she keeps find herself getting a drawn to the flame of wanting to talk to the police she loves knowing that she did it but that nobody else does then the second timeline is now her grown up she's using a different name and she has a daughter herself and every time the first day of spring rolls around that is the day that she murdered that little boy and now we're entering spring with her daughter and she is thinking a lot about her childhood and this murder that she committed and she's really paranoid that somebody is going to find her out in this new life and take her daughter away from her. So very dark, very disturbing. The child timeline really has that childish voice that is done so well and it's just so creepy as she's talking about murdering this little boy. I'm really excited to read a little bit more of that. I don't think I'll finish it this weekend like I had originally hoped, but I'm going to try and get as far as I can. And as soon as they get back upstairs, we're gonna go for a walk. See you guys a little bit later, bye. So I think I'm going to wrap this up. I did start with a strong like 12,000 steps on our walk, a uh, little over five miles, but it's just been like really windy today. It was kind of like spitting rain and kind of feels colder than it should be. So we came home and tonight I think we're just going to read, relax. I'm probably gonna work for a couple of hours tonight. Probably early this week, I will be filming my April wrap up. It will be a quick one because I have started the month with a little bit of a reading slump. So I will be seeing you guys in just a couple of days. Let me know if you like these shorter vlogs, like a quick weekend one. I know I didn't finish a book this weekend, but at least we did some book shopping together. So let me know what you think if you are new here please subscribe and be sure to like this video, leave a comment. I get such a confidence boost when anyone does any of those things, so I always really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy reading. Bye!